Our processional hymn, His Salvation Unto Us, has come, page two in our bulletins. Please rise and face the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Protect us from the dead. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for the Festival of the Reformation is from the Revelation to St. John, chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord. He has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The epistle is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight. Since, through the law, comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood, to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith, apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise.
Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So, if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And we'll continue with our hymn of the day, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our text is our epistle from Romans chapter 3. By works of the law, no human being will be justified in God's sight. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please be seated. My sixth grade catechism class here at our school likes big butts and I cannot lie. Now, let me explain. Currently, we're working on memorizing Luther's small catechism. And most of the explanations of the Ten Commandments start like this. We should fear and love God so that we do not. And then you have a list of all the things that we should not do because we fear and love God. Right? So like the Second Commandment, we do not curse, swear, use satanic arts, lie, or deceive by his name. And then comes the word, but... And the kids, when they recite their memory work, they say it just like that. But, and then after that word but, we recite all the positive things that God commands us to do because we fear and love God. But, call upon it in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. But is a big word. And this conjunctions function signals a change in the opposite direction. It exhibits a contrast between what comes before and what comes after. And in Romans chapter 3, God declares a very big but for our faith. And this was fought for during the Reformation. And it's still very, very, very important for us to believe, teach, and confess today. Verse 19. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. And I'm going to cover this in a little bit. And verse 20. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in God's sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. So why is this conjunction important? Well, over 500 years ago, Martin Luther, he knew quite well that as a sinner, he fell short of the glory of God. And at that time, the church wrongly taught that God's grace and forgiveness of our sins and righteousness was earned by man, by what we do. You see, they taught that faith wasn't enough. That if you had enough good works along with your faith, well then, and only then, were you good. So if you believed and then gave enough offerings, sure, you were good. Or if you gave up your possessions and your livelihood and became a, a monk or a priest, oh, you were really good. But Martin still struggled with sin. And when he examined himself, based on the scriptures, based on God's commandments, Martin still found in his very heart anger, pride, <coughs> greed, and doubt, just to name a few. And as a result, he didn't have peace. He never believed that he was truly right with God. Well, should we be surprised? Scripture says, by works of the law, no human being will be justified in God's sight. 
since through the law comes knowledge of sin. So where was his hope? Where is peace for, for sinners like us? Well, God reveals hope and peace for sinners, starting with that three-letter word, but. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. And upon studying the first few chapters of Romans, Luther finally rediscovered that true righteousness before God, it was not based on what man does, but by what God alone gives. You see, we can't cooperate with God to become right with him. Our works will always fall short. But, verse 24, we are justified by God's grace as a gift. And this gift is through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That being right with God, it isn't a matter of our own doing. It's a gift from outside of ourselves which is given upon us. For our righteousness is earned by Christ alone. He's the perfect sin sacrifice. He's the justifier. He's the forgiveness maker. And we simply trust in this Jesus who gave himself as our perfect sin sacrifice. For the scripture clearly says in verse 26, God has done this to show that he is just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. For God declares those who believe in Jesus you are righteous. You are good with me. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Especially no buts. But our sinful nature loves to add that word. We want to add something to what God says. We want to add something to justify ourselves before God and others. Our sinful nature looks for reasons to boast in the law and to boast in ourselves and what we do. But God says that the law speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped. That is, Closed, shut, silenced, and the whole world is held accountable to God. But our mouths just want to open up and say, but, 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 but. See, that's our sinful nature. It always wants to add buts in order to justify ourselves, to make ourselves think that we're right with God. And so whenever that law accuses us of our sins, whenever we see it in the scriptures, whenever we apply it to ourselves based on the catechism commandments, or when pastor or another Christian you know, shows us our sin, we must fight against that temptation to add our own butts in order to save our own selves. <laughs> but I'm not as bad as my neighbor who raped or killed someone. But scripture clearly declares that there is no distinction. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And besides, we all struggle with sinful hearts that have pride and, and, or lust or hatred or greed. And these are just as unrighteous. But I'm doing my best with my situation here. Now, sometimes we say this actually as a complaint against God. That if God would have given me a better situation, well, then I wouldn't have sinned so much. But isn't that blasphemy? Or other times, we sinners may say this as a plea for God to overlook our failures and just focus on our effort. But God doesn't give A's for effort. Because even our best, if we rely on our best, it's still the law. That if we rely on the law to be right with God, we're doomed. As scripture says in Galatians chapter 3. 
All who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all the things that are written in the book of the law and do them. Our best just isn't good enough. But I don't need to worry. Or, but now that's not really a big deal anymore. Well, these days, many people do suppress their consciences so that they don't worry about being right with God. Some are so bold to say that those who have a religious conscience, well, that's a sign of your weakness. But, you know, that's only half true. Those who do have a working conscience, they actually do realize their own weaknesses. But that's why we wholeheartedly rely on the strength which Christ alone provides. But that's your opinion. We have different interpretations. You can have yours, I can have mine. I'll tell you, that's very dangerous ground. Because what if your interpretation or your neighbor's or interpretation, what if it's wrong? And if someone does say this but to you, ask if you could look at the Bible carefully together with that person and see what scripture says. And don't take any butts. Well, instead of supplying our own butts to be right with God, we must let the law stop our mouths and just let God do the talking. Because the only butt that truly works is the butt which God declares. But now it is written, the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And this is that chief doctrine upon which the church stands and falls. And this is what Luther fought for. This but and everything that comes after in our text, it's so comforting. It means that the pressure is off. That we don't have to promote our own shoddy means for justification. We don't have to come up with the perfect excuse we don't have to come up with the perfect plan for righting our wrongs. We just live by faith in Christ. And we're free to love God with our whole heart and to love our neighbors as ourselves because God has made us right with him through Christ. And we live by this grace every day. No buts. Just the one which God provides. So... When you see your sins, you say, yes, I am a sinner, but I believe in Jesus, and he's my Lord and my Savior. I'm going to rework the first word of one of those verses of uh, him, their opening him today, to highlight today's message. But Christ has full atonement made and brought to us salvation. Each Christian, therefore, may be glad and build on this foundation. Your grace alone, dear Lord, I plead. Your death is now my life indeed, for you have paid my ransom. Have a blessed Reformation Day. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And we'll remain standing and sing together our Christian faith. We all believe in one true God.
dear friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. may your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Therefore, may your kingdom come through the ministry of our pastor, Pastor Witte, and of our congregation, our principal, Beth Landon, and the teachers of Bethlehem Lutheran School, Pastor Bernard of First Lutheran in Cap Haitian, Haiti, Pastor Dan Herb and Messiah Lutheran Church in Middletown, missionary Aaron McKenzie, evangelist Adriel George, and raise up future pastors, teachers, and church workers for your kingdom, and prepare seminarians Miguel Gonzalez Feliciano, J Jeremy Hansen, Jacob Rhodes, and Stuart Soltzi to be faithful workers for advancing your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your hands we commend Jonathan Feeney, Jean DeCamp, Irma Haggerty, Mary Seaback, Jennifer England, Roseanne Buffet, Marilyn Choi, Melita Murphy, Aradine Wolliver, Mimi Carraway, Loretta Johansson, Georgia Meyer, Earl Downs, Gil Denzer, Larry Hyden, Pastor Floyd Leschke, Paula, Nina, Amanda, Penny, Benji, the people of Haiti, and the people of Chile, and those we name in our hearts before you now. We pray for them at all times, thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the evil and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Just a reminder that we at Bethlehem do practice closed communion, which means you may commune with us if you are baptized, instructed in Luther's small catechism, publicly confess your adherence to this small catechism, and are currently a member of Bethlehem Lutheran Church or a sister church of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. If you're not sure or this doesn't describe you, I ask that you do not commune, but I'd be happy to visit with you another time and discuss more about receiving the Lord's Supper here at Bethlehem. And we'll continue with the offering. Mm -hmm.
We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. May we thy bounties thus as stewards true receive, and gladly, as thou blessest us, to thee our first fruits give. Amen. <clears throat> We stand for the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith. And above all, firmly take to heart the word with which Christ gives to us his body and his blood for our forgiveness. By your grace... Lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us when by pouring out his precious blood he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine, that is, his body and blood, as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver, and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at his command, and with his own words, we receive his testimony. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you, both in body and in soul, and to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Send forth by God's blessing our true faith confess. us 
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Blessed name we have. 